Fox News alerts still no official cause of that Florida condo collapse. A study, however, published last year by our next guest revealed the land it sits on has been gradually sinking a little bit at a time since the 1990s. Florida International University professor Shimon Vitavinsky joins us now with his findings. Good morning to you, professor. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. for inviting me. You're welcome. Tell us what you found when you studied this building. Okay, uh, our study focused on land subsidence in Miami Beach and uh, Norfolk because these two communities have been subjected to uh, frequent flooding. Uh, as sea level uh, increases, uh, there, is, uh, there were in, uh, more flooding in both communities, and we wanted to evaluate what was the contribution of land subsidence to that because flooding can occur or because sea level is rising or the land subsides. Sure. So uh, we use a technology which is called INSAR, which stands for Interferometric Synthetic Amperture Radar. It's based on a satellite that transmit a signal uh, from a very high elevation, about 400 miles, and the signal interact with the, with the surface, with objects on the surface, and some of it return to the satellite. Right. Now, uh, in that case, in, uh, over Miami Beach, we found that there were pockets of subsidence. Most of the subsidence was in the western part of the city, where we expected that because the city was that part of the city was built on reclaimed wetlands, and then this uh, wetland uh, was was filled with uh, soil that uh, slowly uh, uh, settled in. We call mm -hmm. it soil consolidation, and we see some pockets of that. That, uh, but still, the, the rates are pretty low. It's about one to three millimeter per year. Okay. The one place that was uh, unusual in that respect was uh, this uh, place in uh, Surfside, which we uh, observed uh, a cluster of these points, uh, showing us that the, uh, the condo building uh, was uh, moving at about uh, two millimeter per year, right. which is very small. Okay, and and it's so, Professor, so that the the condo that collapsed was sinking because of the subsidence, as you say, of two millimeters a year. Could no, so, okay, so what could that? No, no. Let me let me just correct. Okay. What we observed, we interpret the observation was that the the building was moving down. Right. Now we interpreted at the time as land subsidence, but it can be also something within the building itself. Because our focus was about land subsidence, we interpret it as land subsidence. Okay. But it can also reveal that the, the building was moving uh, with, uh, into, the la in, into the soil or uh, without the movement in the right. soil. Thank you very much for clarifying that. So my question is, could that have caused the building collapse? Well, the building, the building collapsed because it reached a certain amount of uh, failure. Uh, it can lead to that. And now, the, these uh, slow uh, movements, uh, they um, usually, typically, when we go to buildings where we see something like that, we see cracks. So, thing like that is not unusual. Uh, right. What uh, happens in the? It's, remember that these observations were in the 1990s, from 1993 to 1999. What happened since then? We don't know if it stopped or it accelerated. Uh, we're now working on a new data set that uh, will allow us to evaluate that. Uh, but the, it means that at the time when we, we looked, the process was very slow. Uh, the things probably reach a. a the threshold for failure uh, just last week, uh, but the, the, there was a continuous, there was some movement over there in the 1990s and most likely continued afterwards. Okay. Professor, uh, word is when you heard about a building collapse, you knew exactly what building it was. You thought it was this building. If so, why? And should other people in similar buildings be worried today? Okay, so uh, we pointed out that the building because it was unusual. It was the only cluster that we saw along the buildings over there. Plaster. Uh, people should be uh, worried. Uh, to, first, they have to check to see the, the, uh, their buildings if it's uh, in good conditions. Uh, what we can do, what we did in the future, I, I, that's what I'm promoting now, is to use this technology to see if there's movement in buildings. Yeah. And now, this is just flagging that something may be wrong. 
uh, but uh, it's a responsibility of the owners is to check if something is wrong, if something is moving, uh, if there is a structural problem and they need to fix it. Yeah. I, we cannot really detect these things. We can just flag there is a might be a problem. Did you flag any other buildings in that area? No. Okay. Uh, but we didn't flag because that wasn't the focus of our study. Right. Our study was focused on land subsidence, how its impact uh, flooding in uh, the community of Miami right. Beach and Norfolk. Interesting stuff. All right, Professor. So we, did, we didn't focus yeah. on building. We, we focused on, on, the, on the land. Right. right. Indeed. See if All we right. should build that wall. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Interesting stuff. You are very welcome. Thank you.